what we're looking at here is a 45 DCOE Weber carburetor. Now for the purposes of this exercise, we are looking at a 45, but it's important to note that the location of all the jets we're gonna talk about are identical across the entire DCOE and DCOSP range of carburetors. So the things we are gonna focus on are the main jet, idle jet, and pump jet assemblies, and where to find them on the actual carburetor. They're all accessible from the top. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the jet inspection cover. And that is going to give us a view of our main jet assemblies. So there's two, one for either barrel, and our idle jets. Again, one for either barrel. So the first thing here is our idle jet, and we're going to remove it with a flat blade screwdriver. And there it is. So the jet presses in, it's an interference fit, so we can just use some pliers to remove the jet from the holder. And there's our idle jet. Now this one happens to be a 55 F8, there's some very small stampings on the side. The 55 refers to the actual jet size, so being 055 millimeters. The F8 refers to the air bleed, which we can see here. Now an F8 happens to be 1.2 millimeters. Um, varying F numbers have got different sort of air bleed sizes and there's no correlation between the F number and how large the actual hole is. So uh, simply an F8 was made after an F7. The next thing we're going to look at is the main jet assembly. We're going to remove an emulsion tube holder here with another screwdriver, a slightly larger one. And that will unscrew. Sometimes you can use the screwdriver just to help pry it up a little bit because they are recessed a little bit. And this is our main jet assembly. So what we do now is remove the emulsion tube holder so we can normally just pull that off like so. And we're left here with our air corrector our emulsion tube and our main jet. Now both the main jet and the air corrector will have numbers stamped on them. This one happens to be a 145 being 1.45 millimeters. The air corrector 155 or 1.55 millimeters. Now once again they both uh, interference fit and just can be pulled out with some pliers so we'll just gently twist the emulsion tube and pull out the air corrector and we can do the same with the main jet. Now what we have here is our emulsion tube. Now this one, also stamped, is an F16. Now an F16 is pretty much in the middle of um, how rich and lean emulsion tubes go. Um, the varying, or the major varying difference between emulsion tubes is the location and number of holes. So we can see, it's different, we can see different patterns of holes on different emulsion tubes. Typically though, higher holes are leaner, lower holes are richer. And the final thing we're going to take a look at now is our pump jets. So we're going to look at the one on this side. There we go. And that's our pump jet just down in there. So once again, we can just use some pliers to gently withdraw the pump jet from the, um, from the body. And there it is. Now it's important to note that when we do withdraw it, that there is a very small aluminium gasket underneath and it's important that that is replaced or at least reuse the same one when it's put back in. If you don't use one at all, then you're going to have problems with your pump circuit. So there we go. There's our main jet, idle jet and pump jet circuits all accessible from the top of the Weber carburetor.